So we're going to jump into Lisa Allen's testimony to the post office inquiry now during phase four. And Lisa Allen is a post office or a former post office investigator. She still works at the Royal Mail Group. And she's being asked about a training. It does seem that she undertook certainly more substantial training than many of the investigators have raised previously. But the Horizon training itself does seem to be extremely short, which we obviously know has been a bit of a hallmark of the system, maybe a bit of blaseness about the fact it's just making a paper process computerised. We don't really need to train people, neglecting the complexity of the Horizon system. Let's jump into the inquiry. Good morning, sir. Can you see and hear us? I, uh, I can, thank you very much. May we please call Miss Allen? Yes. I do solemnly, I do solemnly, sincerely and truly, sincerely and truly, declare and affirm, declare and affirm, that the evidence I shall give, that the evidence I shall give, shall be the truth, shall be the truth, the whole truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and nothing but the truth. Could you confirm your full name, please, Miss Allen? Lisa Jane Allen. You should have in front of you a hard copy of a witness statement in your name, dated the 27th of October 2023. If you could turn to page 33 of that, please. Yes, I do. Do you have a copy with a visible signature? I do. Is that your signature? Yes, it is. At the time you made your statement, there were three documents which were referenced in the request for a statement sent to you by the inquiry, but had not been provided to you. They are the three document references marked in red in your statement. I understand these three documents have since been provided to you, is that right? That's correct. Are there any corrections you wish to make to your statement having had sight of those documents? No. Are there any corrections you wish to make to your statement in light of your consideration of other documents provided by the inquiry since the making of your statement? No. Well, that's a bit of a refreshing change, isn't it? Then uh, no corrections to be made. Statement is as is. We're ready. Are the contents of your statement true to the best of your knowledge and belief? They are. For the purposes of the transcript, the document reference for the statement is WITN 089. <coughs> Two zero one zero zero. Thank you for coming to the inquiry to assist it in its work and for providing the witness statement that you have. As you know, I will be asking questions on behalf of the inquiry. You joined the post office in 1986 as a postal officer working within the Crown Office Network. Is that right? That's correct. In April 1995, you became an assistant branch manager. That's correct. And with the exception of a short secondment providing administrative support to retail line managers, you stayed in that role until July 2000, is that right? That's correct. At which point you joined the security team as an investigation manager? I did. Is it right that that role involved investigating criminal offences against the business and its assets? Yes. You explained that your role was at one point a multi-skilled role, whereby you did some physical security work. That's right. And physical security work related to advising on external crime risk from threats such as burglary and robbery. Is that right? Yes. So it does seem, in line with other witnesses, there's always been this aspect, it's almost like there's been a shift of priorities at some point from physical security towards fraud, which is where the post office scandal began, the alleged fraud and theft and false accounting that had taken place in post offices. But it's quite noticeable that there's that shift over time, isn't it? That a lot of the investigators that were assigned to the sub-postmasters cases eventually... Uh, used to be involved in things like physical security, protecting against robberies, because we know that certainly previously, I don't know what the stats are like now, but certainly previously that was obviously a big challenge for the post office to deal with. So just interested in how those priorities have changed over time. But the role went back to being a purely investigative one by the time you left the post office in April 2012. Yes. In April 2012, you transferred to the Royal Mail investigation team, where you remain employed, is that right? Yes. You say in your statement at paragraph four that when you were first working on the counter in post office branches, balancing of stock units was done on a weekly basis, 
and was completed manually by producing a balance sheet of summarised daily and weekly transactions. But in August 1992, you transferred to a branch where a computerised system had already been implemented. Is that right? Yes. Interesting. So we're talking about a system here that's pre-Horizon. So it's almost post-paper systems, which were still largely in use in 1992 at post offices up and down the country to a precursor system prior to Horizon. What were the systems that you used between August 1992 and July 2000 when you became an investigation manager? Sorry, what, what systems I used? You talked about computerised systems yeah. that you were using from 1992 oh, sorry. in your statement. What yeah. were those computerised systems? There was um, Echo and Alps, which I think stood for all London post offices. And how did the use of those computer systems change the process from balance for balancing? Um, it was basically um, it was computerised, so um, where you would manually write down um, deposits and, and things on manual sheets. The computer would print them all out, all out for you, so you would enter it onto the computer, and at the end of the day, you would run off a summary as opposed to manually add a summary up. Sounds a bit like what Horizon was supposed to do, doesn't it, really? So interesting. You know, it's not the first time this thought has been had about computerising. It'll be interesting to see the experience with this system beforehand and why indeed that just wasn't carried on and Horizon was conceived. Did you ever work on the counter in a branch where the Horizon system was being rolled out? No. When you were working on the counter... Did you know anyone who worked in a branch where Horizon was being rolled out? I, was, I had friends in the post offices that worked with the Horizon system. But at the stage in 2000, before you became an investigation manager, did you know anyone who was in a branch where the Horizon system was being rolled out? I wasn't aware of anyone, no. I guess at that time it was quite a limited amount of branches because Horizon didn't start getting rolled out till 1999. So we're only talking 1999 to 2000. There were some select post offices designated for testing in 1996, but as that part of that beta rollout, it was quite a limited number of post offices. So it's not surprising that you didn't necessarily know anyone using Horizon at that point. Were you aware of any post office staff or sub-postmasters experiencing difficulties in using the Horizon system when it was first introduced? I wasn't, no. Were you aware of any post office staff or sub-postmasters feeling that their training on the Horizon system was insufficient? I don't recall, no. Were you made aware of any such issues when you were an investigation manager about the rollout period? I, I don't recall the rollout period, so I'd have to say no. When you became an investigation manager, did you have any prior experience in criminal investigation or criminal law? No, I never. And in terms of process, you applied for an investigator role within the Royal Mail business and when you were successful in your application you were allocated to Post Office Limited based on your experience on post office counters, is that right? Yes. So in line with other people who've fulfilled the investigator role, they don't necessarily have any background or qualifications or experience in this area of work. But obviously one of the things that Lisa Allen does have insight into is how the counter operations, the actual processes at the post office work, even though they are pre-horizon. But she has got some experience of using a computerised system, which presumably would benefit her in that work. You say in your statement at paragraph 11 that when you began your role as an investigation manager, you completed a three-week residential training course. I did. And was that for both post office and Royal Mail investigators? Yes, it was a, a joint course run for new recruits at that time. That sounds a lot more substantial than we've heard previously, I think. We've heard about the odd day's training in a half a day there, so a three-week residential certainly seems more substantial than some of the people say that they've experienced. 
You describe the people who delivered the training in your statement as being members of the Royal Mail training team. Michael Matthews is one of those people. Was the training team made up of Royal Mail as opposed to post office investigators? It, it, the training was delivered by Royal Mail trainers, yes. You recall sitting an exam at the end of the course, is that right? Yes. You set out a non-exhaustive list of the topics that training covered at paragraph 13 of your statement. That list includes commencement of an investigation, approaching suspects, interviewing, searches, statement taking, the completion of Royal Mail forms, the Police and Criminal Evidence Act, definition of offences, report writing and notebook entries. Have you listed those topics because you recall them featuring on the course? Yes, I think so. Do you recall the topic of disclosure in criminal prosecutions being covered on that initial three-week course? No, I don't. You do recall covering the Police and Criminal Evidence Act. Do you recall covering the Criminal Procedure and Investigations Act 1996 on that initial course? I don't know. So in line with other people, there seems to be a bit of a blind spot where the post office is concerned in terms of the disclosure training. And obviously we know from John L. Singh's testimony that he's saying that largely the way it worked at the post office was they relied on the investigators with regards to disclosure. So there's a there's a thing missing here in terms of investigator training in that they're not really aware of their disclosure responsibilities, but then the safety net fallback should be if this progresses as far as something like the criminal law team, for example, the lawyers should be aware of their disclosure responsibilities. But if they're not acting on those responsibilities because they say it's the investigator's job, you can see how this could slip between the cracks very easily. Do you recall covering the code of practice to that act? No. You say at paragraph 14 of your statement that you undertook a court workshop in March 2002 to understand the legal proceedings and guidance on giving evidence at court. Yes. And you also recall human rights training. Yes. You also refer at paragraph 15 of your statement to a financial investigation course you did in March 2011. That's correct. Did you receive any refresher training on the conduct of criminal investigations between doing your initial training in 2000 and moving to Royal Mail in 2012? I don't recall any, but that doesn't mean that we didn't have it, but I don't recall it. I mean, a lot of organisations, you'd have kind of refresher training, particularly on like local policies, procedures, things like that every three to five years normally, wouldn't you? So there's every chance that she did have it or did the Royal Mail and Post Office not have these systems in place to provide refresher training? Is that another blind spot they've had in terms of the training? Were you given any training on the Horizon system when you became an investigation manager? I was... I don't actually remember the, the training myself. I, I believe it would have been um, probably just one day more for... Because I was obviously counter-trained. I had the knowledge of um, performing transactions, which probably didn't vary very much from one computer system to the other. Um, but obviously, for, maybe for balancing or other, printing off other reports that I might not be aware of, I think I was given one day's training. So again, the Horizon training itself is quite limited. No one seems to have had more than half a day to a day training on the Horizon system on the basis of saying, well, it's just the same, but it's on a computer. Obviously, sadly, we know that's definitely not the case now. And again, might be another reason why things went so badly wrong at the post office. Were you ever given any training on Horizon from the point of view of an investigator looking at Horizon data in the course of an investigation? No. 